Well, brothers and sisters, I have a question for you about your memory. Do you remember your high school graduation? Do you remember that day? Do you remember uh, the week leading up to it? Do you remember getting ready for it? Or, or do you remember your elementary school graduation? Or maybe do you even remember your kindergarten graduation if you had one of those? Do you remember the, the time when your first child was born and you got to meet your first child? Or do you remember your wedding day? If you're, if you're a man, if you remember seeing your bride come down the aisle, do you remember seeing your groom up on the stage, up on the platform, waiting for you? Do you remember your son or daughter getting married? Or, or do you remember the time when you found out that you were finally cancer-free? Or do you remember the time when your team won the cup, the trophy? Or when you won your cadet cub car racing? Remember those moments? They were beautiful and they were special and they were amazing. There was so much joy, so much excitement, so much beauty, so much, so many feelings. And yet, sometimes we really struggle. to realize the full impact of the reality that Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. On Good Friday, we talked about how Jesus finished the work as he cried out on the cross, it is finished. He finished so many things, but the proof is in the pudding, as they say, and we see the proof of the conquest that he achieved when he rises from the dead. And that is wonderful and amazing and beautiful and life-changing all by itself. That someone who is fully human, fully one of us, and who is fully God could conquer sin and death because death could not hold him. Satan could not hold him. He was perfect and pure and he conquered for us. And so he raised from the dead and that is amazing. But it is also amazing because Jesus, whether we really get it or not, Jesus, whether we really feel it or not, Jesus is the best friend that anyone could ever have. He is a better friend than your spouse, a better friend than your best friend. He is a better friend than the friends that you have around you right now. He is a better friend than your family. He is a better friend than your coworkers. He is a better friend than anyone else. And when something good happens to your friend, you are happy, I hope. Right? Imagine that your best friend had cancer. 
Some of you don't need to imagine that. Some of you experienced that or are experiencing it right now. But imagine that your best friend has cancer. And he goes through or she goes through, they go through the treatments, they go through the chemo, they lose their hair, they are sick, they're in trouble, they are weak. But they persevere and they fight through. And one day the doctor gives them a clean bill of health. You're in complete remission. There's no cancer. You are healthy. What would you do? Would you say, hey, yeah, big deal, whatever, who cares? No, they're your friend. You're going to celebrate. You're going to go out for dinner. You're going to party. You're going to, woohoo, yeah. Jesus is the friend who sticks closer than a brother. He's alive. And that means that we can be alive too, because unlike the story about the friend who has cancer, unlike the story of the friend who has cancer, it is us, it is me, it is I, I have the cancer. And the cancer is something I gave myself through my own sin. It is sin. That's the cancer that lives in you and in me. All the things that we do that break relationships, that break relationships with our friends, that break relationships with our family, that break relationships with our God, that break relationships with the creation that God has given us, that break relationship within ourselves. All of those things, that's what sin is. And we're soaked in it. We're steeped in it. It's everywhere in us. And we are so sick the Bible says, that we will die from it. We will most definitely die from our sickness. It's a little bit like the alcoholic who is so deeply entrenched in their addiction that they cannot stop drinking, even when they realize that if they don't stop drinking, their liver and their kidneys and all those things are going to shut down. They are going to die of this, but they cannot stop themselves. That is our disease. But then our best friend comes along. And somehow, and this sadly doesn't work for alcoholism, but somehow our best friend says, I will suck all the alcoholism out of you. I will take it on myself. I will suffer your consequences. I will die for you because I love you so much. Imagine the grief, the sorrow, the shame, the guilt. But he insists. Jesus insists on taking it upon himself because he knows we are hopeless and helpless without him. And so he takes it on himself and he dies on the cross and he takes that, that disease, that corruption, that sin, that brokenness, and he gives it to God. And in doing so, he miraculously sets us free. Brothers and sisters, 
That is who Jesus is. Jesus is, Jesus is our best friend. And he insisted, he insists on taking away our brokenness, on taking it onto himself. And properly speaking, if we really understood this, then on Good Friday, we would be weeping. We would be sorrowing. We would be grieving more than we have ever grieved before because we know that our best friend has sacrificed everything for us. And so it's no wonder that when the disciples see the empty tomb in John chapter 20 that we heard earlier about, they see the empty tomb, they don't go away excited. They go away brokenhearted. Because to add insult to injury, their Lord has been killed brutally by their own guilt. They know it now. And then somebody has stolen the body. Their best friend, the one who has loved them the most that anyone ever could, has been killed and is now had the indignity of being grave robbed. He can't even rest in peace. And Mary, poor Mary, in verse 10, she's weeping. She's sorrowing. She's crying so hard. That she doesn't even recognize Jesus after talking with the angels and asking them, uh, you know, telling them that, that she doesn't know where they've put him. She sees angels and she doesn't get it, right? And she turns around and she sees Jesus, but she doesn't know because she is weeping. Because her best friend is gone and her best friend has been, has been stolen away. Oh, the joy. Oh, the joy. Thinking Jesus was the gardener, <laughs> she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. And Jesus says to her, Mary. And she cries out, Rabboni, teacher. Brothers and sisters, our Lord is alive. Not just our Lord, but our friend. Not just our friend, but our brother. Not just our friend and brother and Lord, but our Savior. And because of that, my alcoholism can be sucked away. My cancer is sucked away. My sin, for which both of those were metaphors, is sucked away. And I and you can live with the friend who sticks closer than a brother forevermore. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.